Alright, finally got it connected. Gotta turn my bike on. Pulled the bike out of the shop to warm it up. That way I can head out today. And then it wound up taking me like, I don't know, close to an hour to finally get on the road. This Evo engine loves cold air. It feels like it has an extra gear. It's a, a five-speed transmission in this one. It's a 94. But when I pulled it out to warm it up this morning and I cut the choke off, it wasn't idling properly. It just sounded kind of funky, idling high. And I made no, I made no adjustments to the carburetor this winter. Plugs looked great um, all last year. And then in the winter time when I would pull it out to ride, I just you know, let it warm up for a while before I take it out. And uh, suddenly got pulled out this morning and it sounded weird. I started adjusting, the, you know, I, I let it warm up and then I started adjusting the, adjusting the idle screw and the idle mixture wasn't doing anything. I was like, oh no. And uh, so I started looking around the bike, trying to inspect it to see what happened, you know, what was going on, and found a vacuum leak. So yeah, the fuel line connecting the two tanks to each other, because this is a classic split tank. The fuel line on, underneath the, the bottom of both the tanks that connect them to each other, uh, on the driver's side, on the left-hand side over here, just as it connects to the fuel inlet on the tank, there's a slight tear. Quick fix, once I was able to figure out where it was coming from, but I was in a rush, so I wound up making a mess. I didn't drain the tanks. I didn't plug the hose with a bolt or anything. I just disconnected the hose clamp. Tried to plug both sides with my fingers while also taking the clamp off, while also snipping the line to get rid of that tear and then putting it all back together. So needless to say, the people at the DMV are going to hate when I walk into that waiting room. I washed up as best as I could, but I still, I'm pretty sure I reek of gasoline. I just filled up my gas tank yesterday, and I'm going to have to fill it up again today because I dumped probably, I don't know, I don't know how many gallons on my driveway. It's like $300 in gas right now. Let's actually check the gas tank right now. I don't even see any down there. There's no gas gauge on this bad boy, and it's a five gallon tank, so it is easy to lose track if you don't pay attention to how many miles you're putting down. Uh, usually I do a pretty good job, but when I get the highway riding and I'm opening that throttle up, it burns that gas. And then all of a sudden, it's been a couple of times where I'll have to hit reserve on the highway, and pull off on the shoulder. I've had to do that before. Put it in reserve, give it gas, start it back up. Maybe not my finest moments, it seems to always happen at Red Oak Brewery. I call it the, the Bermuda Triangle, that whole little area. Every time I pass through there, whether, whether it's by myself or with my buddies, something happens to one of our bikes. So my buddy and I were riding back from my parents' house after we went down to Mooresville to ride around with my brother all day. And we pulled off at an exit just before the Red Oak Brewery to um, get off the highway and then cruise the back roads on our way home and my buddy just started disappearing from back behind me in my mirror. So I pulled off into the gas station right there off the exit and he rolled in behind me. I was like, hey bro, what's up? And he said, I think I lost my front tire. So I looked down and he was sitting on the rim. The, the tire was still attached, it wasn't shredded, but he was sitting on the rim. I was like, oh shit. yeah, that thing is flat. So we pulled over to the, um, the air compressor and lo and behold, the air compressor at that gas station was not working go into the gas station they don't have any solutions for us and uh we have been riding all day at this point we were tired it was getting late that's usually when those kinds of things hit you though right at the beginning of your trip or right at the end of your trip so luckily there was a, an auto parts store down the road i think um i think there was no riley's down the road 
And so I hopped on my bike and I ran out to it and I grabbed a portable air compressor and fixed the flat just in case. Don't recommend putting fix a flat in your tire to permanently fix the tire, but we were just trying to get ourselves home. And so then I had to buy a pigtail to wire the compressor or hook up the compressor to the bike because we had no other way to hook it up to an outlet. So he used his own bike battery like geniuses to run the compressor to fill his tire and it worked for a moment. We got enough air in it. So we were like, all right, we can limp this thing home. And then he went to start his bike up and the battery was dead. We sucked the, the battery dry trying to fill the tire up like a bunch of geniuses. And we were like, all right, well, maybe we can jump it from somebody in the gas station here. And then as soon as we start looking to see if somebody can jump us, the flat tire goes flat again. So I filled it with fix a flat just to see if that would hold. And that was no good too. We sat in that park a lot for, I think like two or three hours trying to fix this, this dang front tire. Finally, uh, my wife rode up there with my kids. Uh, one of my other buddies that was riding around in the area, he showed up, stopped by and laughed at us. And then one of my good buddies went to my house, picked up my trailer and brought it over to the gas station so we could trailer his bike home. It was a shitty day to end a good day of riding, but when you look back on it, those are the fun stories. We got some funny pictures of us sitting in the gas station parking lot on our butts. Like, what the hell are we gonna do? But those are the good times. Not long after that happened, uh, the same guy that, that lost his front tire, him and I were on our way home. Uh, it was a long trip after a, a, a camp out that we did down in Georgia. And it rained the entire way. I'm, I mean, like nine hours on the road, it rained every, it rained almost the whole weekend there. And then it rained every second of us riding home. And a couple of stops before we got close to home, we wound up having to push start my bike, like pop the clutch. The battery was starting to die. And just as we were getting to that Bermuda Triangle area, I go to hit the throttle to pass somebody. And I had like no throttle response. I was like, uh-oh. That didn't feel right. And then I go to give it some gas again and, and nothing. My bike just cuts off. I was like, shoot. So I, I was all the way in the left-hand lane. And so I had to look to my right real quick to try and you know, make sure no traffic was coming. And I whipped it over to the shoulder. That way I can pull the clutch and roll. And I tried to start it. I'm hitting the, hitting the starter and it's just not working. And all of a sudden I, I get it powered up again. It starts up and then the bike cuts off again. So I roll to a stop. My buddy was taking point. He didn't know that I fell behind and he just disappears. So I roll to a stop on the side of the road. I've got no battery power to my bike. Like there's nothing coming through my charging system. And I go to, I got hop off the bike. I pull my phone out. I'm soaking wet. I'm pretty upset. I'm not far from my house. And I go to text my buddy that way when he eventually realizes I'm not behind him, uh, he'll, he'll pull over and check his phone or something to, to see my message. Well, I had my phone in this, I don't know if it's a Ciro or a Ciro, whatever this phone mount is called. I have my phone in this and I've been riding around with it in this up to that point every time I hop on the bike. And it's, it's great for cruising around town at these kinds of speeds. What I didn't realize at the time was it still had so much micro vibration through here, especially at those high speeds that it, uh, What's that little card called in your phone? Your, um, what's it called? SIM card. My SIM card vibrated loose and I couldn't get, I couldn't get my phone to work. I had no service. I didn't have anything on me at the time to pull the SIM card out and like clean it off or, you know, reset it or something. So I'm stuck on the side of the road in the rain, soaked, pissed off my bike is completely dead and i had no way to communicate with anyone on the outside world i was like all right well pushing this bike home is not an option hopefully somebody will stop by state troopers pass me by town cops pass me by everybody passed me by except this one really nice gentleman he, he pulls off the side of the road he comes up to me he's like hey man i ride wanted to check in on you i was like uh, can i use your phone dude and so I, I called my buddy up and he was like, where are you? So he circled back around and uh, he wound up calling his wife this time. His wife picked up his trailer and then we had to trailer my bike and go home. So two long trips that that buddy of mine and I went on last summer, both of them ended up with each of us having to trailer our bikes home 
at that same exact exit. I've got stories about that trip, the beginning of that trip actually, but we'll save that for another time. It was one heck of a trip, bike problem after bike problem, but again, looking back on it, those are the fun days, man. Maybe I'm just stupid, I don't know. One last quick story about the Bermuda Triangle. I was on my way home from Maggie Valley. Uh, we, we went out to visit the Wheels Through Time Museum, which if you've never been, that place is awesome. It was when they did the, one of the knucklehead raffles. So my brother, a friend of mine, my brother's girlfriend, we all took a trip out there and we stayed in Asheville for the night. Rode out to the museum, participated in the raffle. Didn't win the raffle, still had a good time though. If you've never been out there, you have to check the place out. Uh, just the ride alone is worth it. But then to go check out all those bikes, and I'm pretty sure every single bike in that museum uh, is, is currently able to be started. They all run, which is crazy. And I think he has the same startup procedure for every one of them as well. On my way home, again, late at night. At that point of the trip, I was by myself. And I was trying to stretch my gas tank home. And as soon as I hit that exit, like right as I approached the exit, my bike cut off. It, it was sputtering and I was on reserve. I was tired, didn't feel like stopping. And uh, I should have stopped. But luckily I had enough juice to like roll myself into the, the parking lot. And so I snapped a picture of that Circle K sign and I texted the, the guy that had his flat tire. I said, guess where I ran out of gas? And he was like, man, you gotta get a tattoo of a gas tank now. So I'll, I'll put like a, an old school, like jerry can, a military jerry can or something somewhere on maybe my forearm or something like that, badge of honor. I don't know what this lights deal is, but it takes forever. Six and a half hours later. This whole area, it's like the, the gas station capital of the world. We've got BP, which has been there forever. This 7-Eleven is new within the last year. We haven't had any 7-Elevens over here. And suddenly we've got this one over here, which I like 7-Eleven. Let my kids try their first Slurpee recently. Nothing but ice sugar. There's a shell. Right across the street, another gas station. I mean, another 7-Eleven. I don't understand it. Literally, you could hit a football from one to the other if you tossed it. Then there's your second BP. And then right down the road there is Sheets. I don't get it. Ironically, I show you guys all these gas stations right after I tell you my running out of gas story. You got it, bro. Give me the lights! All right. <clears throat> and there it is. Satan's butt crack. All right, see you guys in like four hours. Peace.